What's the deal with these bridges in Bowser's Kingdom? On the surface, they seem fine, until you realize that the supports for them just don't attach to anything and are simply floating. Or what's up with the clouds in the Magicant stage? This is the only surface where you randomly can get spiked right through the floor. It's not even consistent either, and not even other cloud stages work like this. Or what about this Korok at the top of Ganon's castle that's still up here? Did you not get the memo? Do you not think to move or get out of the way when four giant lasers are pointing in your direction? Well, well, what a year it has been. I've looked at a bunch of weird things in this time from numerous Nintendo games. So to wrap the year up, let's look back at the best moments from the TT DMS series and apply some real life logic into Nintendo games. This time with 60 things that don't make sense. Oh, and if you wanna see the full videos a link for that will be in the description. How come if you crouch and run into an electric wire, you don't actually get electrocuted? It's not even like you're crouching under it because you're clearly phasing right through the electricity. Why is it that sugarcane is on display in the Goron Village shop, but when I buy it and place it right next to it, only then it starts to light on fire from the volcanic heat? How is Jigglypuff able to put anyone asleep from singing her song? Even robots like Mega Man or Rock fall asleep somehow from this melody. But weirdest of all, even another Jigglypuff falls asleep from the same song that she herself sings, but now when that same song is sung back to her, she falls asleep. What dictates whether a character can wall jump or not? Like both Toon Link and Young Link can wall jump, but then Breath of the Wild Link can't when Breath of the Wild is a game completely based around climbing on walls and jumping off of them. Or then there's Villager, who throughout the entire Animal Crossing series could never jump, but in Smash, he's just a natural wall jumper. Or you ever wonder what's up with the bunnies in this giant carrot in that kingdom too? The only entrances are these small holes, yet they somehow fit an entire massive airship inside of here. Why do they use this sign to show that quicksand is deadly? Now you may think that a skull is a good visual to use, until you realize that every single resident in this kingdom has a skull as their face. So this would be like the equivalent of just having a normal face on this sign in any other kingdom. How do TMs work? I mean, they just look to be CDs. How is that randomly gonna teach a Pokemon a move? Do all Pokemon just have like a CD slot where these go into? Or are these just like instruction videos that you play on the TV on how to use that move? And then you just get your Pokemon to watch it. When you lose a battle, the loser pays the winner money for winning. But when you beat a member of the evil team, why do they pay you as well? Like, is this concept just so ingrained into the culture of the Pokemon universe that even the crooks and thieves on the evil team still feel the need to pay up when losing even to the guy who's ruining their plans of world domination? What is with the Flame Guard Potion? It can fully protect Link from the heat right next to a volcano, but if you stand too close to a campfire, then it does nothing and you still catch on fire. I mean, the description literally says prevents your body from catching fire. I could even wear flame breaker armor and it's still as useless as ever. Why is it that when you slip from climbing in the rain, you always fall in the direction of the slope? Like for example, in this situation here, if I were to lose my grip and slip, then I would think Link would fall just straight down, but no, he almost glides across the surface, like a magnet is pulling him in. What's with this champagne weapon here? There's no opening for the gun barrel or anything, the bottle is corked shut with even this metal thing holding it back, yet it still fires ink somehow. How come different clothes give you random powers and abilities? They have nothing to do with the actual clothing 
thing either. Like a mask that makes you run faster, or a shirt that makes you jump quicker. But weirdest of all are these sandals that give you a speed increase. So now you'll run faster in sandals than you do in running shoes. How are the characters with full body suits able to eat the food in this game? I'm talking about people like Samus, Meta Knight, or even Olimar. And then there's Rob, he doesn't even have a mouth at all. So I have no idea where he puts the food, he just shoves it in his face. How is it that both Squirtle and Greninja can drown in water? These are both water type Pokemon. Literally where they live and hang out is in the water. But now they can barely even swim for like 5 seconds before drowning. When you're using the ice flower, you just freeze the water to make ice, right? So then how do you also make ice when walking on lava? If you were to freeze lava, then it would just turn back into a volcanic rock. Lava doesn't create ice at all. How does Peach send you letters with one-ups in them as you progress in the story? Isn't she a prisoner captured by Bowser? Like what kind of prisoner can just send letters with useful items in them that will help the person who's trying to save the prisoner? So if you look at the description for the climbing gear items, it'll say that it has no slip gloves and no slip toes for the body and pants items. Well that sounds pretty good to me, until you realize you still slip just as much in the rain and it doesn't do anything. Psst, what happened to no slip? I want my money back. So Bolson is this guy who sells you this house. But when you talk to him in Terrytown after you complete the Terrytown side quest, he'll say he's gonna head home to Hateno Village. But when you get there though, you'll find him still camping out in your front lawn. You sold me this house! This is now my property! Get off my lawn, you squatters! Imagine you buy a house in real life, and then your real estate agent just pops up a fire and chills on your front lawn for the rest of time. How come Mario can submerge his entire body in ice cold water up to the bottom of his head and he doesn't start to freeze? But if I move an inch forward, only then he starts to lose health and freeze from the cold. So it's almost like the process of him swimming makes him freeze rather than the coldness of the water itself. Also, how come the Odyssey has human chairs inside of it? Like wasn't this ship made by the residents of Cap Kingdom and these guys just float around, they don't ever sit down. I mean, Cappy himself doesn't even use the seats. And there isn't any chairs in Cap Kingdom either. What's with all the trainers that just stand there on every route, completely motionless, staring in one direction? Look at them, they're like statues. The King of England should hire them as his guards. They'll stand through the most brutal weather conditions too. Like, guys, this is getting dangerous now. Go home or something. The amulet coin causes you to earn double the money when beating trainers, but how does this item even work? Like, do you have to show the other trainer that you were using it after the battle and then force them to pay up double against their will? And what if they don't have any extra money on them? Then what would you do? So the metal box item in this game turns any character into metal with a few different attributes like weighing a lot more and your character doesn't talk now. So given that, how is Metal Jigglypuff still able to put people asleep by singing her song when she doesn't make any noise now? So then what exactly is putting these players to sleep? How come all the items in the Smash Bros universe don't have any weight to them? I performed a very scientific test by using this scale, yet it didn't move at all. Even a giant hammer, heavy sandbags, or wooden crates are totally weightless here. The guard at the entrance of Gerudo Village won't let you in because you're a guy. So how come you can literally change clothes right in front of that person and then get in with no questions asked? So you might think the security here is pretty poor, but no, it's quite the opposite. Because I could literally be way up here out of sight from everybody, but if I so much as even change my pants, which is hidden from every angle, then that's it. Cover's blown, somebody immediately spots me and I'm kicked out. Do they have invisible security cameras or something? Why do the toads even sell you moons to begin with? 
I'm trying to save Peach here, guys. Don't withhold valuable power moons that I need to use for the Odyssey to start again. I'm trying to save your princess. Are you really trying to make a quick buck off your boss's misfortune? Or do you just not like Peach to begin with? Mario can't breathe underwater in this game, and yeah, that makes sense to me. So given that, how come Mario can breathe in space when on the moon? I think it would only make sense to have a similar air meter. I mean, even the other humans need astronaut helmets, so Mario's gotta be like superhuman. Shiver has the job of a newscaster in this game, but I think she should start doing magic or something instead. Within a single frame, she vanishes a mask and makes a fan appear in its place. That is some excellent sleight of hand. Why is there like this weird obsession to make everything in a shape of a squid in the Splatoon universe? I've never seen a species just so focused on the shape of their people, with even the scales at a grocery store, or the buttons of a stoplight in the shape of one. It even gets to an impractical degree here, like how phones are in the shape of squids too. That is such an awkward shape to watch a movie on. But what's with the inside of the New Donk City Hall? Like who makes this giant building and then just hollows out the interior? So what is the purpose of this whole structure when there's nothing inside? This is prime real estate. This place has no rooms, it's just these walls that you can even see outside from. In the squid capture, you can move fairly fast by propelling yourself with this stream of water. But then how come you can't move at all when you're on a solid surface? The only thing that is touching the ground is the water. So you're trying to tell me that the friction of the water and the ground is what's stopping any sort of movement? No way. Most characters that have a tether grab can also use that tether to grab onto the ledge as well. But it doesn't make sense how some characters can, while others can't. Like how is Luigi just not able to use his plunger on the ledge? That seems like a perfect fit. It even sticks too. But what's really weird is how Isabelle has a fishing rod that she can use as a tether, yet Steve can't use his fishing rod. Where's the consistency here, eh? Another thing with the tethers is how do they stretch to pretty ridiculous lengths when grabbing the ledge? It could kinda make sense for the energy-based ones, but take a look at how big Ivysaur's tether is. Aren't these vines a part of his body? Weirdest of all though is the snake that Lucas uses. Damn, now that looks painful for the snake to be stretched out like that. Brutal, man, especially when you see the actual size of it. Also, how does Link even eat the things that he eats? This guy can eat frozen solid chunks of meat, just acorns, or even a whole raw bird. Doesn't even need to chew, just scarfs down the whole bird in one bite. Plus he can even eat unlimited amounts of all food. Damn, this guy needs to go into professional speed eating. How does this camel divine beast get way up here to his perching points after you complete the dungeon? I mean, he only has these four stubby legs and managed to climb up this giant cliff Furthermore, all the other beasts have cutscenes that show how they got up to their respective spots, while in his cutscene, it simply fades to black and then he's randomly up here. I need answers, Nintendo! How come some planets have a gravitational pull while others don't? And it's not even like the size of the planet has anything to do with it, because these tiny planets have gravity while this massive one doesn't. Especially when you have these two planets right next to each other, but you get pulled towards the smaller one for some reason. How come the islands in this game just float on the water's surface? I mean, islands are just land masses surrounding surrounded by water. They all connect to the earth underneath them. But the ones here are somehow buoyant and just float. This is made of sand here. How is this sand not breaking apart and sinking? Why is it that only one piece is required for flame protection? So I could just walk around the center of a volcano with only a helmet on and be almost naked on my body and I don't even get the slightest burn on me. What are the weapons supposed to be made of in this game? You can have this giant metal club that just disintegrates after slapping it against a few enemies. 
They just disappear too. No rubble or debris remain. Are these cardboard weapons or something? The weights of the characters in this game mostly make sense, but there are some odd ones. Like how does Sephiroth, this big buff guy, weigh just as much as Kirby, this tiny puffball made of air presumably? Or how is Mewtwo, this giant Pokemon, weigh less than this tiny monkey? Another weird one is Meta Ridley, this giant metal dragon that weighs less than Terry, who's just some strong dude with big arms. A bit of backstory for this one, just take a look at this picture for a sec. It's a render from the year 2000. Now tell me, if you had to predict who would eventually make it into Smash from this photo alone, would you ever guess that the piranha plant beat Waluigi? Yeah, that's really it for this one. How is Waluigi still not in Smash, yet a piranha plant is? How come you need to use HM moves to break certain objects? Like this little tree, why do you have to cut it? Just have a fire type burn the thing. Or rock smash, like Machamp, you punch rocks for a living. Why do you need a move to tell you what to do? What decides whether a Pokemon has the levitate ability or not? You might say, well, obviously, if they're levitating or not. Duh. But then what about Geodude? Or Magneton? or Chandelure. So these Pokemon have Levitate, while these don't. So where's the consistency here? Or how does the entire water supply for all these rivers in Gerudo Town come from this tiny pond up here? Surely this would run out in a few minutes, and it doesn't even rain in Gerudo Desert either. Why does Link need to be in the exact spot to see his memories? I could be standing right here, and Link would just be like, Hmm, those are some pretty normal looking trees over there. But then I move one inch forward and Link's all like, Oh my god, these are like the trees I was walking around with Zelda at, no way! When Mario first gets Cappy, why does he just throw him away like that? Luckily, Cappy coincidentally has like a boomerang effect, but Mario didn't know this. They met like two seconds ago, and he already tried to throw him away. In all the shops, you'll hear a little jingle as the shop music that's playing inside or from a radio. But then how does that same jingle play when you're on the shop that's on the back of Dory? <laughs> There is no music player or radio in sight, so is like Dory over here perfectly humming the same tune? What is with the water they use in Zora's domain? Like how come it doesn't conduct electricity like every other water source in the game? It can't make ice from Cryonis either, yet it still shows up as water when using the ruin. I think the only logical conclusion here is that they're using oil, not water. How does burning wood increase its weight? Like, I'm not making this up, look how this scale will actually move down when these bundles of wood are all lit here. But what's even weirder than that is even if you put out the flames, the wood will remain heavier. So how did you magically add weight to these objects? How come some of the maps just seem like the worst locations that you can play matches in? Like, why would you have a turf war in a grocery store of all places? Are they really gonna sell these products with ink all in them now? Or worst of all, how about an art gallery? Like, what? This is probably the last thing that should be near this place. These are expensive works of art that you're ruining with ink. Who allowed this? How come all the salmonoids just turn around and walk away at at the end of every round? Like a second ago, you were coming at me trying to kill me with the frying pan, but oh, round's over, can't attack you then, that would be cheating. How come there's always a crowd cheering? Like every character gets a little chant, but where exactly is the crowd cheering them on? You could argue they're simply behind the camera, but if that's the case, how do they bring these crowds to such crazy places like a desert, a falling clock tower, or even outer space? And why does Krom have the coolest chant out of all the characters too? Why is it that Link can completely avoid the bomb's blast if just some small object is in the way? When you're in a thunderstorm, the lightning will be attracted to you if you carry metal weapons. 
So then how come the lightning doesn't get attracted to the metal armor that you wear? You can carry the tiniest metal boomerang, which makes you the biggest lightning rod, but wearing this outfit has the same effect as wearing rubber in the Zelda universe. In the mission where you first save Luigi in the mansion, how do you actually leave the mansion? Because the only way you can access that place is by using the Boo power-up, which allows you to go through these grates. But you have to get rid of that power-up to talk to Luigi, and there's no other Boo power-ups in this area. Meaning, now both of you are stuck in this cage here. How come there are some points where you can use the spark capture without any wires this time? It's like you're just soaring through the air, and if that's the case, then why can't I just fly around with the spark capture anywhere? That would be so cool. Guys, thanks again for all the support on this series over the past year, and subscribe for many more videos like these in the coming year. I will see you all very soon. Take care.